Praise the Lord, prayer team. Happy Thursday to you and welcome to morning prayer and devotion. This morning we have many, many needs to take to the Lord and I want to read as many of these as I can to you this morning from our prayer list. Uh, we do have a couple of new requests to bring to you today and uh, the first one is with our spiritual and family needs um, along with continuing to pray for Josh, Allen, Ashley, Dawson, Charles, Frank, William, and Dana, all battling addiction. Uh, we need to add Jacob uh, to that list as well, who has really been struggling um, with addiction for quite some time and needs the Lord's help. Stephanie and her children need restoration in their relationships. There's much pain and dysfunction in their family. Uh, we also need to pray for uh, Jeffrey for reconciliation in his family and for healing for his wife. Shirley struggling with thoughts of suicide. Jenny Perkins' sister Lisa who has many, many uh, mental, emotional, and uh, spiritual needs today. Um, so many people dealing with uh, mental illness and emotional um, wellness issues. Let's continue praying for each one today. Many families need our prayers. The Cummins family, the Marlin family. The Clark family, the Moore family, the Williams family, the Pulliams, the Robbins, the Sappingtons, Debbie Riddick's family, um, Mark Perkins' uh, children and their families, Judy Johnson's grandson, Beulah Ziegler's granddaughter, Jennifer and Brenda's family, J.R. Johnson, uh, Destiny, Annette, Dave, Marcia's friend Ashley and Marcia's friend Linda, Terry Monk is in need of salvation, Carmen Ask us to pray for David to return to God. Rose Brown asks prayers for her family's salvation and for them to serve the Lord. Uh, keep praying for our Mingo RCF residents. Um, today is my Bible study day there with them and uh, going at a time whenever they are uh, very disturbed from the passing of their fellow resident, uh, Zach Cox. We do need to pray for Zach's family as well as for all the RCF residents here locally. Uh, who are mourning this uh, great loss. We need to continue to pray for our Mingo Job Corps students and alumni. Hold up Landon Cummins in your prayers uh, as he has been uh, there uh, enrolled in their program uh, since, I guess, about uh, November. And um, we're believing for him to be used for a great revival in that facility. We need to continue to pray for revival in all of our communities and for the safe return of prodigals. Uh, we need to pray for those who are in nursing homes, that they'll receive the care that they need today, and uh, pray for nursing homes in our area that are experiencing COVID outbreaks. Cheryl Lachance's cousin, Regina, is having some health problems. Uh, Janie Hart has COVID pneumonia and is extremely weak from that. Uh, let's pray for those who have chronic lung and respiratory issues as well. Uh, several have been on our list um, for uh, most of the time that we've been doing morning prayer and devotion. So they need a miracle uh, to reverse their uh, conditions. Robbie Northrup, Kendra Ortiz. Uh, and then we've added Gary Lee, Dee's mother Carolyn, and Nancy Collins in the more recent past. Nick has been battling flu symptoms, haven't heard an update on Nick, but we trust he is improving. Uh, Shar is recovering from recent surgery. Sue Helton Morris has a surgery coming up at the end of this month. Jamie Joe's cousin Maisie has a brain tumor. Uh, those battling cancer include Gladys Sims, uh, Jordan, Julia Nelson, Christine, um, Jamie Joe's grandfather, Ari Bowers, Christian's friend Betty, Valerie, Daniel Dickinson with stage uh, two lung cancer and thyroid cancer. Marsha Moore's friend's grandparent, the Shell Strain sister Cindy, Scott Lucia, Alice Elizabeth, Dwayne Lewis, Claire, Dennis Phelps, Heather Milligan, Diane Escher, Cheryl, Amy Dees, Rebecca Peterson, Linda Young, Murphy Belgard, Marsha's co-worker's aunt, uh, also in need of salvation, Lynn Lawrence, terminally ill with bone cancer, uh, Maggie Lowry with thyroid cancer, Jim Ramey with multiple myeloma and other health problems, Pat's younger sister Pam uh, recovering from recent cancer surgery, and Kenny Burns uh, with cancer 
um, and in the hospital right now with a bad lung infection. Let's pray for Garland, Virginia, as they continue their precautionary treatments. Let's keep lifting up uh, the children uh, who are um, sick and afflicted. Sawyer Jordan has RSV. He's already uh, doing some better after uh, getting some medication in him. Um, but, um, you know, not running fever, but his cough still um, needs much improvement. Uh, Stella needs a heart transplant. Elliot um, possibly has autism. Darla's granddaughter and Tammy Lawson's granddaughter um, with seizures and epilepsy. Bailey May with hearing loss. Baby G with several health issues. Abel with PKU and autism. Tano with spina bifida. Abram uh, born with GNAL1 disorder. Uh, Brantley and Elsie with heart issues since birth. And many adults also were praying for them with heart problems, including Bud Taylor, Jimmy Warren, David Duggar, Michelle Strain's mother, Joyce Fisk, Sister Patty Arnold, Mike Sappington, Kenny Prenzel, Janie Parrott's nephew Blaine, Kelly B., Brother Mark Morris, Cheryl LaChance, Amy Dees, Holly, Jenny Perkins' dad, Robin Felver, and Doyle Mitchell. We're praying for Doug Seaball, who is in stage four kidney failure. Also, Christian's friend Dave and Oscar Smith with kidney problems. Pray for those who are battling shingles, <clears throat> those with Parkinson's disease, including Tim Workman, uh, Christian's friend Matt, my dad, my mother-in-law Beulah, Russ, uh, Marsha's mother-in-law Vivian, all these needing our continued uh, prayers for their healing. Uh, Sherry needs a liver transplant. Uh, several with stomach problems need our prayers, including Eva's daughter Sandra, Michael Parrott, Olivia, Natalie, Regina Marlin's granddaughter Aubrey, Pam Williams' granddaughter Savannah, Amber Kay, and Heather Spence. Let's keep praying for those who suffer with diabetes and migraine headaches. I pray for Sarah, Marty, Riley, and Tracy, all battling illness. I continue praying for Tracy's home to sell in order to shorten her daily commute back and forth to work. Uh, those with dementia need our continued prayers. Uh, those with uh, back pain, let's keep praying for them, as well as those who are dealing with arthritis and mobility issues. We need to pray for continued recovery for all those on our list who have suffered stroke. Uh, most recently, Sandra Julius, uh, John Sutter, and Paul Johnson. And uh, also uh, Pray for continued recovery for Anthony Schiffer and Wayne Owens, Buddy Randolph, Evangelist Billy Huey, Carmen's cousin Kelly, Johnny's nephew Joey, and Sue Helton Morris's nephew Dwayne, uh, who have all uh, suffered major stroke in the past and have been on that long road of recovery for quite some time. Pastor Chris Dew, uh, recovering slowly but surely from Guillain-Barre syndrome, needs continued prayers. Uh, they need continued prayers for their financial situation as well as uh, it has been uh, well over a year since he's been able to uh, to be gainfully employed. Uh, Brother David Kent with partial paralysis from a fall on icy pavement over a year ago. Uh, Terry's sister Cindy recovering from back surgery recently. JR had amputation of three toes recently and has many other health needs. Others with health issues that we're praying for include Lois Link, Eddie Potts, Randy Reeves, Venus, Robbie, Marshall Link, Laura, Cheryl LaChance's uncle, Kristen's friend Ann, Meredith, Robin Tibbs, Judy Cookson's granddaughter and great-granddaughter, Cheryl Ogden, Bob and Shirley Perkins, Jessica O'Hara, Judy Williams' brother, George Tibbs, Michelle Clark, and Devin Huff. In our unspoken needs today, Belinda Stratton has three unspoken requests. A Terry's youngest sister, Robin Kay, with an unspoken need. Also, Venus's daughter, Judy Williams' family, Johnny's family, uh, Jessica and her family, the Pulliams, and Tracy Powers with unspoken needs. Our military personnel and their families need our uh, constant prayers. Uh, we need to continue praying for the situation at our southern border, which is very, very dire, and uh, pray for a resolution to the conflict between uh, Texas and the federal government there. Uh, North American missionaries need our constant prayers, as do our global missionaries. Let's keep lifting them up, them up today. Uh, pray for the Tomyevs in Ukraine. I uh, just saw in the news yesterday there was more shelling going into the capital uh, city, and we need to pray for their protection as that is where 
their church is and where they reside in that area. The Pattersons are just across the board in Romania. We need to pray for all the Baltic states there um, and the region that this would spread no further. Uh, praying that also for the situation in Israel, that this would not develop into a wider war and for um, better relations between um, the leaders of Israel and our current leaders in this nation. We also need uh, to pray for that war in Ukraine to end. So let's lift all these needs up to the Lord today in prayer. But before we do, I want to take a moment to uh, welcome those who are joining us. Uh, Judy's with us today and thanking the Lord for a good report from her doctor's appointment yesterday. So praise the Lord for that. Kristen, Johnny uh, with us today. Carmen on snow day number three. And that's the way it is here too. Uh, the secondary roads and especially the uh, folks like us that live on gravel, they're just melting and refreezing, uh, especially with not much sun or temperature change over the past several days. So the kids are out of school again today, and they've been out all week. So stay safe and warm where you are. Uh, good morning to you, Ben. Thanks for helping us get that parking lot cleared off yesterday. Uh, mom and dad with us, Johnny, I think I've mentioned, um, Sherman and Marsha. Uh, God bless each of you today as we go to prayer together, but Pam is with us today as well. Thank God for all of you. Let's look to the word of the Lord, Acts chapter 13, uh, verse 22. And speaking of Saul, it says, And when he had removed him, when God had removed him from his position, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. When Samuel the prophet came to visit Jesse, Jesse called all of his sons together. I know that each of you, I'm sure, know this story very well. David was not invited by his father. The prophet uh, looked at each of them. God told him that he had rejected each of them and uh, that the oil was not to be poured upon their heads uh, to signify their anointing as king. Uh, and then the prophet asked if there were any more sons. And finally, David was called and God instructed Samuel that this boy David was his choice. God saw David while others disqualified him. Samuel anointed him with oil, blessed him, and sealed him as God's future king of Israel. And then God began to open doors for him. David's heart was tried by the fire. He faced Goliath. He was tempted to kill King Saul. He hid in caves. He was betrayed, ridiculed, and mocked. Uh, that's the parts we don't like to think about. David proved uh, not to be a perfect man, uh, committing grievous sins himself, and yet God identified David as a man after his heart. David loved God, and when uh, confronted with his sin, he repented. David lived honestly before the Lord and pursued relationship with God, not being satisfied with religion or rules. In short, David desired not just to serve God, but to see God. When he was king, he brought the Ark of the Covenant, the manifested presence of God, back to Jerusalem. He danced wildly and expressively during that triumphant parade of the return of the Ark. Men's opinions and religion that restricted his worship of God were thrown to the side, and uh, all of Israel was able to witness the Ark's presence publicly for that brief time. David built a tabernacle, a tent, the house, the Ark of the Covenant. He hired worshipers and priests to minister before the Lord 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and all of Israel had access to freely worship God there. God dwelt unhindered with his people, and that's what he desires. Remember that uh, the Word of God told us that he uh, put David in the kingship knowing that as a man after his own heart, he would do all, all of his will. David, not just the Moses and the Joshua's uh, under his reign could see God, but all the citizens of the kingdom were invited into the presence of God. And I would submit to you that that is 
uh, the will of God when he said that David would do all his will. You know what? It's not just God's will that we see God, but it's God's will that not only that others see God through us, as we talked about yesterday, but it is God's will that we lead others to be able to see him and to be in his presence. Uh, what a wonderful opportunity that we have uh, this coming Monday, uh, January the 22nd, if you'll go to the Missouri District UPCI uh, Facebook page, uh, there will be a uh, home Bible study uh, seminar or training session with uh, the great Merrill Cornwell from um, Kansas, who has probably won more people to the Lord through Bible studies personally uh, than anyone in our um, in our present day or in uh, certainly in the um, uh, past that we are aware of here in America as far as one single person winning people to the Lord. He knows how to do it. He's someone that helps people to see God. I want to help people see him, and I think it'd be good if each of us would um, take advantage of that opportunity to learn from a great Bible study teacher. And so if, you, uh, if I could just put out a plug for that, especially for our folks here at Greater Vision, um, we can each have a ministry leading others to Christ if we will take advantage of the pointers that we can gain from that. Amen. Let's go to prayer this morning, believing God to move in all of these needs. I've used a little extra time here, and so we'll uh, move through these prayer needs as quickly as possible and not mentioning all the names again as we have uh, hauled them out in God's presence here already. But let's pray together and believe God to move in all these situations today and to help us to help others see him. Lord, we thank you today for this privilege we have to know you. Lord, it's such a blessing to be in your presence daily, to be in a situation where there is no veil between us and your presence, but we can come boldly into the Holy of Holies. We can come right up to the throne of grace and bring our petitions to you, knowing, God, that you are with us. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We thank you that not only are you with us, but you are in us today through the power of the infilling of your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your marvelous plan that you've given us, Lord, that we can have a fellowship with you. Thank you, Lord, for this plan of redemption. We know it's not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, that everyone would be able to have everlasting life. Help us not to get in the way of that, but to facilitate others being brought to the foot of the cross and to the upper room. We give you praise and glory, Lord, for helping us to lead others to waters of baptism, to lead others, Lord, to a place of, of relationship with you. And we pray today that you would help us with all these spiritual needs and family needs that we've mentioned daily. These are our opportunities. These are those within our sphere of influence that we need to be winning to you. And we believe, God, for you to move through every ministry of our churches through every individual, God, to lead others to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, to help people to get victory over their mental illness situations and over emotional scarring and uh, dysfunction in their homes. Lord, help me, God, to be patient and to be long-suffering as you are. We pray, God, that you would move, Lord, for those who have lost someone dear to them recently. You are the comforter. We pray you would bring, bring peace, Lord, to uh, Zach Cox family and uh, to those at the Mingo RCF that are mourning his loss. Help me, God, to have the right words to comfort them today. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, for those who are in nursing homes that are experiencing COVID outbreaks today. We pray, God, uh, your healing for each of them and protection for each resident. We pray for Cheryl's cousin, Virginia, today with her health problems. Janie Hart needs healing of COVID pneumonia. Those with chronic lung conditions, Lord, we believe for your healing. Those battling flu symptoms, those who are recovering from recent surgeries, and those like Sue who have surgeries that are coming up uh, at the uh, end of this month or in the next few days. We thank you, Lord, for uh, those who've had doctor's appointments that have gone well recently. We give you the praise and we pray for those that are going in for checkups and for lab work for good results in the name of Jesus. So we just want to take a moment and glorify you this morning. 
You're the healer of every manner of sickness and disease, and there's nothing too hard for you. And it's in the stripes that you took upon your back that we place our trust in your suffering, God. You paid the price, Lord Jesus, and we thank you and we praise you. Hallelujah. We believe for those with brain tumors and those battling cancer for healing today. Hallelujah, Lord, for those going through chemo and radiation, those going through precautionary treatments after successful surgery, we believe for their healing. For each child on this list today, Lord, touch them right now. We believe for their continued healing in Jesus' name. Those with heart problems and kidney issues and those battling shingles today and Parkinson's disease, those with liver issues and stomach problems, those battling diabetes today, God, we believe for your healing touch for each one. Those with migraine headaches, those suffering from MS, we pray for Tracy's special situation where her daily commute needs to be shortened due to this disease process. Lord, we pray for relief for her of both disease symptoms and also of this long commute. Lord, send the buyer that she needs in Jesus' name. We pray for healing of the mind and clearing of the uh, thought processes for those battling memory loss and dementia, those with back pain and arthritis and mobility issues today. We believe for your touch for them. Hallelujah. You're able to make us completely whole this morning. We believe for continued recovery for all those who are afflicted in body today and those who have had major setbacks in their health, those who have suffered stroke recently or even in the distant past and still on the road to recovery. Those recovering from uh, surgeries today and from rare syndromes. In the name of Jesus, we believe for healing for each one. Hallelujah for Eddie Potts and Lois, Venus, Randy, Robbie, Marshall, Laura, Cheryl's uncle, Ann, Meredith, Judy Cookson's granddaughter and great-granddaughter, Robin Tibbs and Cheryl Ogden, Bob and Shirley, Jessica, Judy's brother, George Tibbs, Michelle Clark, Devin Huff, each of these who need a healing touch today, reach down right now, God, and give your deliverance for them. We pray for Belinda's unspoken needs, for Terry's sister, Robin, for Venus's daughters, Judy's family, Johnny's family, Jessica and Tracy and the Pulliams with unspoken needs today. Our military service members and their families, Lord, be with them today. Protect them, encourage them, and strengthen them. Be with our missionaries all across the globe and right here at home in North America. God, open doors for these missionary families. I pray your encouragement, Lord, upon them. I pray your strength for them emotionally, God, and mentally today as they're under lots of strain, carrying so many needs for other people and interceding for so many, interceding for cities and nations today. God, we thank you for placing them there. We pray your protection upon our missionaries in Ukraine and in the Middle East today. Hallelujah for believers who are being persecuted. We pray, God, for your help for them, for deliverance. We pray for peace in Israel, for the war in Ukraine to end. We pray for better relations between our leaders and other nations today. We pray, God, for wisdom for our leaders in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We know, God, you are in control of all things. And you are shaping the affairs of men yet today as people seem so far from you. Yet, God, in the midst of it all, you are doing a work and you are sending revival from heaven for us today. Help us to reach up and take it by faith. We believe for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost in these last days in our communities. We believe for truth revelation to come to each one. We believe for every church in our community to be preaching the same message, that there be no isms or schisms among us, but we truly become your body in this earth that's functioning properly. In the name of Jesus, let our doctrine be pure. Let revelation come to churches that are not preaching pure doctrine. Hallelujah. I pray your mercy and your grace, God, upon these assemblies. In the name of Jesus and upon us, God, if there's areas that we are straying in, I pray that you would bring us back to where we need to be. And help us, God, to be fervent in our prayers. Fervent, God, and consistent and faithful in all things. And we give you praise and glory for your help today and your strength today and your peace and your comfort. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, prayer team. We have one more shot at this for this week to pray together. 
So let's join together again tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. I am encouraged in the Lord. Uh, I feel like I've just been to church this morning as I felt God's presence sweep over us, and I needed that because we didn't get to have our midweek gathering uh, last night uh, at the house of the Lord. But I feel his presence here today. We can uh, continue to pursue our relationship with God, and we can see God right here in our homes, in our cars, where at our workplaces, wherever that you're viewing these videos from. Let's just keep in the faith and be strong, and I'll join with you again tomorrow morning, Lord willing, at 7.30 a.m. Have a wonderful day.